Retro Requiem. Hello, I'm Brian Perry for Retro Requiem, and I'm here with Carlos Bordeo from the developer Ace Team. Ace Team are the creators of Xenoclash, Rock of Ages, Xenoclash 2, and their newly announced game, Abyss Odyssey, a 2D action platformer. How are you doing today, Mr. Bordeo? Fine. How, got, how are you doing, Brian? I'm uh, doing really good. Really excited for this interview today. Okay, great. Now, we last talked to you about a year ago when Xenoclash 2 was released, and you revealed to us that you already started working on a new game, but you weren't able to reveal anything. I can only assume that this game is Abyss Odyssey. Am I right? Uh, yes, exactly. We were already working in, in Abyss. Actually, Abyss goes back to way before. Uh, it, it was actually being sort of pitched even before Xenoclash, but it had some elements which we weren't so sure about, so we sort of put it on hold and and, and then came back to it. But it's been uh, in a Steam for quite a while. Mm. What elements in particular were you guys working on uh, developing? Um, <laughs> originally, we, we created like this short sort of mock-up of uh, how the game was supposed to look. Uh, it was an action platformer uh, with two players um, with like an emphasis on the fighting mechanics. Uh, the visual style was a little bit different. Uh, it was a little bit more mature and maybe a little bit, uh, uh, had more gore and stuff uh, like like blood. But we decided that it wasn't necessarily the best fit for what we were going for. So we had something there. It wasn't a playable prototype. It was just uh, like we were setting up things in the game engine to look like uh, actual gameplay. But uh, that's what we we had in the beginning. Wow, that's really impressive. Um, one of the things I noticed about Abyss Odyssey is that it has such a deep combat system. How would you say that Xenoclash influenced the combat found in Abyss Odyssey? Uh, I don't think the combats of Xenoclash uh, influenced directly the combat in Abyss because they're so different in, in genres. Um, Xenoclash is a first-person fighting game, and uh, in terms of how many of those exist, there aren't many, so we had to pretty much uh, invent it entirely ourselves, how the system worked. We took some elements from, from other games, but uh, not that much. Um, in, in, in a 2D fighting game, you basically have years and years of history of, uh, how th of other fighters, and uh, we've sort of come up with a mix of Super Smash Brothers with Street Fighter, but we're taking more elements from the traditional fighting game, and that's not bad because you, the truth is you actually want your your players to be comfortable with the game mechanics as soon as possible to understand uh, how to play the game uh, rather quickly, which was actually one of the, the, the problems with the Xeno Clash was that since the fighting engine was so, and the fighting mechanics were so different to everything else, you had to like really get into the game if you really wanted to to use the fighting system as much as possible. Yeah, I I can really tell that Ace Team makes really original games. I mean, you made Xeno Clash, you made Rock of Ages, and now you straight even further from that formula, and you're making a 2D action platform, and your games are very unique. What do you think inspires these unique games you have? Uh, I think we always start from the the point of view that if we're going to do something uh, in whatever genre we do, we want to do something different than what's already available in the market. We want to see um, what we can bring maybe from other genres into this one and see how we can mix uh, them together and, and, and make something that's fresh, that feels new. So... In the case of Abyss, though it looks like maybe a, a, an action platformer, it actually sort of takes stuff from many different genres because we have a, on one side we have like the really sort of hardcore fighting uh, game sort of aspect of the game. Then you have the action platformer uh, aspect of the game, but we also have a, a little bit of like a roguelike game where you have permadeath and some elements which we'll be discussing soon in an, in an upcoming trailer where we reveal more unique aspects of, of the game. But it's really taking uh, cues and, and elements from different uh, types of games. We really look forward to seeing that trailer. And another thing you guys do that I think is really unique and different and surreal is your art style. 
and apparent, and especially in this game where you have randomly generated environments. How do you? What, what made you come up with this uh, this idea of this randomly generated environments and everything like that? Uh, like the randomly generated uh, environments, I think uh, are really uh, appropriate for the game because this is a game that is meant to be replayed a lot. It's not like a linear sort of project where you a game where you're gonna start reach level one, level two, level three, and then I beat the boss and that's pretty much it. It's over. Uh, it's a, it's a game that from the beginning we wanted to be something that players would, uh, go through it a lot of times. Uh, maybe the game is, it's very different to, for, for instance, The Binding of Isaac. Uh, it's a, it's a title where you replay and you get to find new stuff and, and a, and, and a bit in that sense, we wanted to make something where you were gonna find uh, new enemies, new powers, uh, unlock new new stuff, and that you would be going back into the abyss uh, several times. And in, in order to do that as uh, interesting as possible, the randomly generated environments was uh, something we needed to do. Yeah, and something that I think really adds replayability to your game is the co-op feature that you added. Was this a feature that you wanted to put in past games? Uh, co-op, uh, yeah, I, we felt that uh, co-op uh, was absolutely necessary for this title. Uh, we've been giving a lot of hints, uh, like, uh, after developing uh, so much of the fighting engine, we've, like, really found ourselves that uh, noticing the potential that the game has even for one-on-one, -on -one, like, like a versus mode. Though that won't be um, a feature of the game upon release, it's something that we definitely want to explore as an update to the game because uh, when we started the game, I mean, we were focusing uh, a lot on the fighting uh, engine, but it wasn't all that developed and it came to be uh, to the level where, where, where we really see its potential uh, later on in the, in the project. And it, it, it's, it's to a point where we really see that it wouldn't cost us that much to make a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. I mean, since the game has this uh, whole idea where you uh, have like the main characters, but these main characters can uh, sort of transform into the monsters, and the monsters have the entire moveset of almost like a regular player. And basically, we have a game with a huge, like a pretty fairly large roster of playable characters. So we feel that. Um, uh, this is something that we can potentially uh, explore uh, later when, after the game is released. And uh, making it co-op uh, was one of the steps which allowed us to realize the, the, this part of the game. Because at the beginning we had the co-op set without a uh, friendly fire. Uh, the, the play both players were, were going through the game. And as soon as we sort of switched on to friendly fire on, like the, the, the base... Uh, way of playing the game it became a lot more fun and we actually noticed that a lot of people were enjoying just simply beating each other in the game and, and, <laughs> and fight, fighting instead of moving along. Uh, yeah, it does sound like a lot of fun. I think us at Retro Requiem would probably beat each other up too if we had the chance. Um, <laughs> we noticed that, and you spoke on it a little bit earlier, that each enemy has their own unique moveset. Yeah. And it, we, we figured that's a very deep fighting system. How big of a roster do you plan on having in the game? Uh, um, let's see, I don't know the number, but I'm thinking about, I'm definitely thinking that it's going to be within something around the 30 characters, maybe wow. 25, but it's a lot, because you basically have the main characters, uh, you have, I mean, if, if there's an enemy in the game that's a little, like, flying, uh, uh, like, a creature, no, that, that that's not something that you can... You, you can transform into, but all the like regular sized enemies like that are your size or bigger, mm -hmm. even the bosses, they can be, um, you can get them and play as them when, when you level up in, in the game. And obviously it's not fun to like transform into a character where you have a, uh, like this really complex fighting system, unless you, really give them a proper move set, you really give them proper special attacks and that you you almost configure the the 
the enemies as if they were fighters themselves. And actually, that's been the, a, a bit the process with each enemy and each new special attack that we do. Instead of just simply um, going in and configuring the attacks of the enemy and putting them in the AI, the, what, the, the process here is that we, we make the special attacks and we test the enemies as playable characters in the training room where, where we start seeing what combos can be done with them, what uh, special, how the special attacks work combined, and it's a completely different approach. I think that what you would do in a regular game where you make the enemy and uh, you, you, you're thinking only about how the AI is going to take over that enemy and use it, but here we're more concerned about how the player is going to use the enemies. No, I, I think that's a very good point. And um, are you able to have more than one transformation sort at one time when you beat these enemies? Um, you can go on to... It's a bit like you have a special power which allows you to capture the souls of the enemies and transform into them. So you can either get the, the, the enemy enemies by this way or you can purchase them and like uh, there's going to be like shops and hidden shops where you can purchase the souls of these characters so in in a playthrough you could be swi switching between different enemies and uh the, the idea is also that you as you get uh, deeper into the beast or you you level up uh, with the different play play sessions that you are able to get the better monsters and that allows you to uh, do to have more interesting moves and, and, and play the game differently. Okay, the game is coming out to Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. Yeah. Is there any chance that the game will be coming out to the next gen consoles as well? Uh, we've talked about it briefly. Um, there's always the chance. Uh, there's no reason if the games were successful enough, maybe we could put it on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. But at this at the moment, it's difficult to say without knowing how how well it does and if people are going to request it enough. Uh, it'll depend. But uh, at least uh, initially, no, we're just launching on the current gen platforms. Uh, but there's al always the chance. Mm, that's very interesting. And will there be any mod support for the PC version of the game? Mod support? I'm not so sure. Um, for the following reason, um, because um, some people have asked us whether or not we were going to do early access on Steam, and obviously because of how we're making a game that also has to be on the consoles and we have to go through the certification process and, and everything, it means that it would be kind of hard having a, a sort of an alpha of the game on, on first on Steam. But the point is, I, I think that what's really interesting about early access is not necessarily the fact that you get a game that's uh, in development and later on you get a full game, but early access games tend to get a lot of content into them over time because they're still not finished. And I feel that with Abyss we're going to have a full release, um, but the intention, and that's clearly an intention we, we have here in ACE, is to continue to support the game through new content and new features over time. So I think we're going to have the benefits of releasing a fully playable, like, stable game, but at the same time, our intention is to uh, update the game over time. Uh, we could we can practically do anything here. I mean, we could uh, add new enemies. Um, and this goes a little bit tied to one of the features that hasn't been announced, and I can't really talk, or, talk about it until we release the second trailer. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the, the gradual updating of the game is something that we're, we're really looking into. And, for instance, the, the whole one-on-one, uh, -on -one, the versus mode thing, is something that we're really putting, thinking about maybe doing in the future. Okay, thank you. That sounds awesome that you're going to add more content for the players. I mean, I know it's still early, but do you guys have a release date yet for Abyss Odyssey? Uh, no, we don't have a release date yet, um, but I don't think it'll be that long before we actually um, say when it's going to be. Mm -hmm. 
It, yeah. It's definitely this year, and it's an, uh, actually not that far off. Okay, and just like the last time we interviewed you guys, we're going to ask about any future projects you guys are working on. Uh, this, the same answer that when you asked me about Xeno question, <laughs> we actually have started uh, very, very... It's way very early, this uh, next project. Uh, there is something in, in the works. Uh, but it's, it's very, very early. So, but you can rest assured the Ace team already has a new project after Abyss Odyssey. And maybe after, uh, some time when we announce it, you'll be coming back to the interview and asking us, oh, you remember when we, <laughs> we had this other interview? And I'll, I'll be able to discuss about that new, new yeah, title. Yeah, we'd love to interview it again in the future. Thank you for joining sure. us, Carlos. We really appreciate okay. it. Okay, it's been great. Thanks to you. Yep, thank you too. Remember to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube page. And please come back to RetroWorkham.com for more amazing interviews with great developers.